Thank you for watching this video. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe to my channel. My channel gets way more views than it has subscribers, and it's a little embarrassing that I'm not at three digits for subscribers yet. Can't we break the 100 barrier? If you like this kind of content, please look up Layton Hills Baptist Church, because Layton Hills Baptist Church is the church where I'm a member and where I serve, and they have this very similar content, and they're on YouTube, they're on Facebook as well. Look, look them up as uh, also. Now, this morning we're going to look at Genesis chapter 4. If you thought chapter 3 had drama and intrigue, chapter 4 does it. Chapter 4 has the first murder. Chapter 4 has the first mention of polygamy, where a man has two wives. So there's a lot in there. What jumps out to me is how interesting the, the names are. We know that the first murder is between brothers, where Cain kills Abel. And Cain and Abel, they're famous. We know who Cain and Abel is. But it's intriguing to me that the word Cain in Hebrew is the same word for smith, like a uh, metal worker smith, a black smith, a gold smith. So Cain in Hebrew means smith. And he kills Abel, his brother, and Abel means, in Hebrew, the word means breath or vapor. And that cracks me up. You know, it's our names mean something. And so if you're reading in the Old Testament and the names are driving you crazy, one of the ways to make it interesting is to look the name up and see what it says in the original language, even if you can't pronounce the crazy uh, um, complicated name. So you have Cain killing Abel. And Cain gets a mark that guards and protects him. And then he goes off and he finds a wife. And then after that, in verse 19, you have Lamech, who takes for himself two wives. Nowhere in scripture before this is polygamy encouraged or discouraged. And so it just kind of pops up. And the two women who become his wives, their names mean turning Away and shadow. Isn't that interesting? Totally cool. Now, when I teach 10-year-old boys Sunday school and we do Genesis chapter 4, Cain and Abel, the murder is very exciting to them. But then they ask, where did Cain get his wife if Adam and Eve produced all the children? Where'd his wife come from? Where did Lamech's wife come from? All of that stuff. Ten-year-olds ask the best questions, right? And the answer is one of exploding population and long life. So that, yes, there's incest going on in Genesis. And praise the Lord that he protects them from the generational defects of that. But very quickly with long lifespans, Cain would have been able to marry his great-great-great-grandniece, as it were, which still doesn't make it less creepy or weird, right? When you read Genesis chapter 4, what jumps out to you? What's your answer to where did Cain get his wife? Tell me in the comment section. I want to know. How do you answer a 10-year-old asking that question?